The question you're probably asking yourself right now is, what is my body shape? Am I an hourglass, a triangle, an inverted triangle, a rectangle, or a circle? And we'll get to that shortly, but the first question we need to answer is, why does this even matter? Here are reasons why it doesn't matter. Your body shape isn't a determinant of health. It doesn't tell you if you're healthy or unhealthy. It's simply a style tool that you can use for dressing better. It isn't another label to use against your body. It's not good or bad, it just is. And it's not useful for fulfilling unrealistic societal beauty standards. Your shape isn't ideal or not ideal. We all need to stop believing that we're supposed to be these six foot tall, 120 pound hourglass shapes. We're not, and that would be totally boring, right? Or as someone more clever than me once put it, how cool is it that the God who created the oceans and the mountains and the galaxies looked at you and thought the world needed one of you too? Okay, so why does body shape matter? Knowing your body shape matters because we all have different shapes and they're all beautiful, but if we all dress the same way, we're going to think that certain bodies are more beautiful than others. I want you to understand your body shape so you can learn to dress to complement your beautiful body. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Priska Jordan and I make videos for women who value their personal style over fashion. In today's video, we'll cover how to measure your body shape, the five body shapes and how to style each one, how your body shape changes over your lifetime, and the misconceptions about the shapes. If you'll watch until the end, you'll have a much better understanding about body shapes than most women and you can help them too. Let's get started. The first chapter, the one you've probably been waiting for, is how to measure your body. Now, I could make this into a five minute video on its own, but a year ago, I produced a YouTube short that was 52 seconds long and it has all the information you need. So I'm going to show you that. And then you're going to need to measure your body using a fabric measuring tape. And lastly, you'll plug in your measurements into inchcalculator.com and voila, you'll know your body shape. Do you know your body type? Hourglass, pear, apple, triangle, rectangle. Well, just in case you don't, here is how to measure for it. First, you need a fabric measuring tape. And what we're going to do first is measure the shoulders. So put it at the very top of your shoulders and that is your shoulder measurement. Secondly, your bust. So place it around the widest part of your breast without a bra on, take a deep breath, and that is going to be your bust measurement. Thirdly, your waist, and that should be the smallest part of your torso. That's your measurement and fourth, your hips. It should be the widest part around your butt and that is your measurement. Take this information, go to inchcalculator.com, plug in your metrics and that will tell you your body type. This is the time to pause the video to measure yourself. And we're back. So what is your body shape? Let me know down in the comments and while you're down there, please tap that like button if you're enjoying this video so far and subscribe to my channel to improve your style with me every week. Now I'm going to get into the nitty gritty details of body shape measurements. If you're just looking for how to style your body for your shape, then skip on ahead to chapter two. But if you're curious, let's talk about why there's so much confusion when it comes to body shape. You could go to any of the fashion capitals across the world, New York, Paris, London, Milan, and they would all have different ways of measuring and each of the designers would have different ways of measuring. So the thing about measuring your body is that it's quite ambiguous because there are really three different methodologies. The first one includes your bust measurement, your waist, and your hips. The second one includes your bust measurement, your waist, your high hips, and your hips. And the third one, the one that I use, includes your shoulders, your bust, your waist, and your hips. So you can already see how these varying methods would produce different results, right? To further complicate things, there are multiple methods of measuring. So for some people, you measure the bust with a bra on and for some without. And with your bust measurement, do you take a deep breath in and out or do you not? I prefer to breathe under a garment, so I personally take a deep breath in and out. For your waist measurement, do you measure your natural waist, which is where you crease to your side when you bend? Or do you measure your standard waist, which is considered one inch above the navel, but doesn't take into account long torso versus short torso? And then what happens if you don't crease when you bend to the side? 
And the biggest question that I had is, is your shoulder measurement important because it does change the size for me, but for some people it doesn't. So you see, there's no agreed upon right way of doing it. And every designer, every brand, every seamstress or tailor has their own way of doing it. And oftentimes it varies in-house depending on what type of garment they're making. However, generally agreed upon, the three most important measurements are bust, waist, and hips. Then there are the limitations. The body shape methodology doesn't account for your height, whether you're tall or petite. It doesn't account for plus size. It doesn't account for long torso versus short torso. So there are limitations, but I find this system works really well for helping me to understand my body and dress better. Another layer of complication is that there are technically five body shapes, but I've seen up to 10 total. The ones we'll use for this video are hourglass, triangle, inverted triangle, rectangle, and circle. And lastly, you might not necessarily fit into one category. Everybody is unique, right? And just like with personality, some people are extroverted or introverted or ambiverts. And there are varying degrees of each one. We're all unique, so there won't be a perfect system. If this system helps you, then I'm really happy about that. But if it doesn't, then that's okay too. In chapter three, we'll get into how your body shape changes over your lifetime. But first, let's discuss the five body shapes and how to dress better for each one. Chapter two, the five body shapes. Now there are generally considered five primary body shapes and that includes hourglass, triangle, inverted triangle, rectangle, and circle. Can you guess which one is the most common? Hold that answer and I will tell you when we get to it. The first shape we're gonna talk about is hourglass. I have a confession, I've been cheating by using the term hourglass in my videos. The thing is only 8% of women are hourglass shaped. But I use the term because most women want to look more hourglass shaped. Even this body shape methodology advises women to dress to balance their proportions, which is to say to dress more hourglass. So it's something that is a useful styling tool. While I do have an hourglass body shape currently, I make videos for women to flatter their curve. So whether you're truly an hourglass, you'll enjoy my videos. Now I need to cheat and use some notes because there's a lot of data in this video. The first thing I wanna cover with the hourglass shape is what it is. An hourglass shape includes a clearly defined waist with balanced proportions of either the hips or the shoulders or bust, depending on your school of thought. Technically speaking, the waist is 25% smaller than the other measurements. Famous examples of hourglass figures include Marilyn Monroe, who is arguably the quintessential hourglass shape, also, Christina Hendricks, who played the daring Joan Harris in Mad Men, which was one of my favorite TV shows, and the supermodel Ashley Graham. For each shape, I wanna give you styling tips, including how to balance your proportions, which is to say look more hourglass, or how to emphasize the imbalance, which is a really cool way of styling things depending on your personal taste and maybe your mood for the day. To style an hourglass figure, you can wear fun necklines like sweetheart, v-neck, and scoop neck, and fitted sleeves. The most flattering dresses are wrap dresses, but anything cinched or belted is going to flatter your figure. To emphasize the high contrast in your waist and hips, wear high-waisted bottoms, especially if it's belted, to add more emphasis. One of my subscribers requested this styling advice. She's an hourglass figure and she wants to know how to style summer outfits that aren't t-shirts. So I recommend tanks with wider straps paired with skirts, mid-thigh shorts, or white flared jeans. The next shape is triangle, which is sometimes called a paired shape in the fruit world or spoon. So famous examples include Beyonce, Eva Longoria and Jennifer Lopez. Does that shock you? Because it shocked me. I would have considered these ladies to be hourglass figures. But then I realized that one, it depends on different stages of life when your body shape changes and two, the way that they are being dressed. So internet experts that are assuming some things about their measurements say that they are triangle shaped. And while we can't exactly know without knowing their measurements, it's just widely agreed upon. So I'm gonna default to the experts. 
However, their bodies, like all bodies, change over time, so they might not always be triangle shaped. However, however, they often dress to balance their shape, so it's going to give a more hourglass appearance. 20% of women are considered triangle shaped, and that means that their hip measurement is at least 5% larger than any of their other measurements. If you have a triangle shape, you can balance your proportions with shoulder details like strong blazers, puff sleeves, or drop shoulder tops. I also recommend that you try pants that are hip skimming and either boot cut or flared. To emphasize your shape, wear skinny jeans and A-line dresses. This will really play up your hips the most. The next shape is the inverted triangle and it's exactly what it sounds like if you take that triangle shape and turn it upside down. It's sometimes called a strawberry shape in the fruit world, but only 5% of women have the inverted triangle shape. I do have a few examples of celebrities with this shape. The first one is Katherine Zeta-Jones. Now, when I saw this ad for Wednesday on Netflix, which is another one of my favorite shows, I thought for sure she's an hourglass figure, and she might currently be, but as you can see from this other photo, she definitely looks more like an inverted triangle. There's also Renee Zellweger and seven-time Olympic medalist Simone Biles. Oftentimes, athletes are either inverted triangle shape depending on their sport or rectangle and that's advantageous to them professionally. So with inverted triangle shape, the bust or shoulder measurement is larger than the hips and the waist isn't very clearly defined. I think there's about a 5% difference, but the most important thing is that the bust or shoulder measurement is larger than the hips. If you have an inverted triangle shape, you can balance your proportions by wearing fitted sleeves and wide leg pants or an A-line dress will help to balance your proportions. But to emphasize your shape, a tailored blazer with skinny jeans is going to look extra strong on you, as we can see in this example with Cameron Diaz. The next shape is a rectangle, and I've heard this called straight framed. I think sometimes I say narrow framed. Um, in the fruit world, it's a banana, which isn't oftenly talked about. But if you guess that this is the most common body shape for women, then you are right. It represents about 46% of women. Now, famous examples of rectangle shapes include Princess Diana, Carrie Washington, Taylor Swift, and Zendaya. So Zendaya's style is just one of my favorite. The way that her stylist creates more of an hourglass shape through curves and colors is just really brilliant. And it's such a good example of how you can use your shape and clothing to create the look that you're going for. So technically speaking with rectangles, all of your measurements are close to equal. If you have a rectangle shape, you can balance your proportions by wearing a belt at your natural waist, which means that you really need to know the most flattering rise for your body, and I do have a video for that. Now, the most flattering dress for you will be a fit and flare dress, but anything asymmetrical will also help to create some curvature to your body. To emphasize the straightness of this body shape, you can wear straight leg or wide leg pants, boxy or crop tops, and square necklines. Also, vertical stripes will exaggerate your shape. The final body shape we'll talk about is the circle, but you've probably heard this as an apple, so we're using more of a fruit term right now, and this is sometimes also called a round shape. So some famous celebrities include Melissa McCarthy, Mindy Kaling, and Kate Winslet. With this shape, bust and waist are almost equal, and the hips are smaller than both. This includes about 20% of women. Now for styling tips, if you have an apple shape, you can balance your proportions with v-neck tops, empire waist dresses, and skirts that are knee length or above. Also, boot cut jeans will look really good on you. Now, before you think the only information that matters in this chapter is the body shape you currently are, I have to break it to you. You can well expect your body shape to change multiple times throughout your lifetime. And that's what I want to get into in this next chapter. In this chapter, I'm going to cover the different ways that your body changes throughout your lifetime at different points in your life. 
But before we can get to that question, we have to understand what causes your initial body shape to be determined in the first place. And that is a combination of gender and genetics. You're predisposed to carrying fat in certain regions of your body. For men, excess fat is carried in the abdomen, and for women, excess fat is stored in the hips and butt. Genetically, you're predisposed to your general proportions. So if you start to look like your mother, your grandmother, your great-grandmother, that is likely why. However, your body shape does change over your lifetime, whether intentionally or unintentionally. If you're watching this video, it is more than likely that your body shape has changed over your lifetime. Your first big body shape change is at puberty when you develop breasts and hips due to the increase in estrogen. Then at some point in your life, you experience stress, but frequent stress causes spikes in cortisol, which causes accumulated fat to be stored in the torso. Then if you've been pregnant, you've changed again. The increase in estrogen causes your breasts to swell, fat to accumulate in the lower abdomen, and your hips to widen. And finally with menopause, the decrease in estrogen causes the breast to shrink and fat to redistribute to the waist. Oh, I almost forgot one. The last one is gaining or losing fat or muscle. This will cause your body shape to change. So a question often asked is, should I strive to change my body shape by losing fat or gaining muscle? My answer from a style and self-worth perspective is no. I think it'd be better to embrace what makes you unique, especially since it descends from your ancestors and it's part of your biological heritage. My videos focus on helping you gain confidence in the way you're dressing and flatter your beautiful body. But I'll defer to the health and fitness professionals to help you with any health changes, but I don't think body shape is a good way of tracking health because it's not that type of metric. It's really more so for style. Now, since producing that YouTube short that I showed you earlier on how to measure a body, I have gotten a slew of comments and misconceptions about body shape. So I'd like to go over the top five with you today to clear up any of that confusion. The first one that is most common is that hourglass is the ideal body shape. False. For Hollywood actresses, Hourglass seems to be the most popular, but I've noticed that it's really just the way that they dress to look more Hourglass as opposed to their true body shape. For runway models, however, rectangular shapes seem to be the most common. My opinion is that the best body shape is the one that you have, and it's going to change over your lifetime, so don't get so attached to the label as opposed to just how to use it to style yourself better. The second very common misconception is that you should always balance your proportions, and that's false. There are times to emphasize the quirks of your proportions, but do it all intentionally. And that's why I talked about with each of the body shapes how to balance your proportions or emphasize that imbalance. And on top of that, whether you're bloated or tired or both, that is not the time to worry about balancing your proportions. That's the time to go for an easier outfit. The third false idea is that the measurements are the law for body shape. I mean, yes and no. Technically speaking, yes, but since it isn't being added to your official government record, we really don't have to be so technical. The thing is, you know your body shape better than anyone else because you see yourself without clothing, without posturing, without poses. So decide which one you relate to best and helps you with your style the most. This fourth misconception is sort of a pet peeve of mine. You can determine someone else's body shape. You can't. Just like you can't see someone's inner personality, you really only see their outward expression. And honestly, it's not super nice to project your opinion onto someone who isn't asking for it. I've done that with these celebrities because they literally get paid millions of dollars for notoriety, so I don't think they'll mind. But generally speaking, it's best to just discuss your own body and graciously, unless someone else is asking for your opinion. And the last misconception I often hear is that your height changes your body shape. Yes and no. A tall, muscular, hourglass-shaped woman might be thought of as more of a rectangular shape, whereas a petite, curvy woman is going to look more hourglass just because those proportions are going to contrast each other more. Now, if you want to learn to flatter your curves, then I have a slew of videos for you. This is a really good playlist called How to Flatter Your Curves that you should watch next. 
I love sharing style advice for curvier women who don't want to hide their curves but embrace their beautiful bodies, so subscribe to my channel if you're interested in that type of content. I'll see you next week with a brand new video, but until then, take care.